what is EBIT? EBIT stands for earnings before interest and taxes. And the formula to get it is you take net income and you add back interest and taxes to get the earnings before you deducted interest and taxes. What is EBITDA? EBITDA stands for earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. And the formula is to take net income and add back interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. What is EPS? EPS stands for earnings per share. And the formula to calculate it is to take the net income, subtract the preferred dividends, and divide it by the common shares outstanding, or how many common shares the company has. What's a P-E ratio? The P-E ratio stands for price to earnings ratio, and you get it by taking the share price and dividing it by the earnings per share, or EPS. What is ROIC? ROIC stands for return on invested capital, and you calculate it by taking the net operating profit after tax, or no PAT, and dividing it by the invested capital, or the money investors put in. What's a DCF? DCF stands for discounted cash flow, and it is a valuation method used to find the value of a company, and you can compare that to the current share price. So it is based on the time value of money, which is the principle that $100 today is worth more than $100 next year because time has value. And it's a complicated formula to find the DCF value if you didn't go to business school, but basically you project the future cash flows, you discount it with the discount rate, which is based on the weighted average cost of capital, and you add them all up. And because you can't project all the years of the cash flow, you will have to add a terminal value at the end. So basically, it's a lot of predictions, and it's not completely accurate. It's based on your predictions. But after that, you add assets, you subtract debt and liabilities to get the equity value, and then you can divide that by the shares outstanding to get the value of the share. What is growth investing? Growth investing is the strategy of investing in companies with strong growth potential. And that means strong expected future earnings and strong expected capital appreciation in the future. A good example of this would be Tesla. A few years ago, Tesla was losing money. It wasn't making profits, but investors were still putting money into Tesla. The reason is because they thought that Tesla will grow and it had good growth potential. And now Tesla is a bigger company. It has expanded and it's still expanding and it is now profitable and making money. So generally speaking, growth investing usually focuses on tech companies and emerging markets. But overall, it just means investing in companies that you think will grow in the future and has a good future potential, even though it might not be making profits right now. What is value investing? Value investing is an investment strategy focused on buying undervalued stocks. Let's say we have a company and the share price is $50. If you do an investment analysis of the company, then let's say you figure out that the proper value of the share should be $100. Then you should buy the share because it is undervalued. And generally, if you're a value investor, if you think the share value is greater than the share price, then buy the share. So obviously, the share value or the intrinsic value is what you believe. And that's based on your own investment analysis. And you can do a DCF to figure that out. But it is subjective. It might not be the proper value, but it's based on your own rational analysis. And you can look at company fundamentals like price to book ratio, price to earnings ratio, free cash flow, and return on invested capital to figure out what the company is actually worth and buying it if the price is below the right value. What is margin of safety? Margin of safety is a concept in investing used to minimize risk. Let's say we have a company and we are thinking of investing in the company. The share price, also known as the market value, is $50. And we do some investment analysis and we believe that the intrinsic value of a share of the company should be $80. So the margin of safety would simply be the intrinsic value minus the market value, which is 80 minus 50 which is $30. So this $30 is the difference between what we think the share should be worth and what the share price is right now. And the bigger the margin of safety, the safer it is to invest and the lower the risk. It can also be expressed as a percentage. So the margin of safety divided by the 
uh, intrinsic value, which would be 37.5%. What's the difference between common stock and preferred stock? When people talk about buying stocks, what they usually mean is buying common stock, which is what all publicly traded companies issue. And they have all the characteristics we think about when we think about stocks, such as having voting rights and having a say in the company. However, there's a different type of stock called preferred stock, and it's not as common because not all companies issue them. And they are preferred in that they are paid dividends first before dividends are even considered for common stockholders, and they usually have regular dividend payments. Also, during a bankruptcy and liquidation, they are prioritized in that they are paid the assets first before it goes to the common stockholders. However, they don't have voting rights, although there are some exceptions, and because it's so stable, they don't have as much a potential for capital gain. So common stock is usually focused on getting company ownership, while preferred stock is more about getting a stream of income. What is market cap? Market cap is short for market capitalization, and it is the total dollar value of all the shares of the company. You get it by multiplying the share price by the shares outstanding. So it's basically the market value of the whole company. What is enterprise value? Enterprise value is a more comprehensive way of valuing a company. And what it represents is the amount of money it takes to acquire a company. So the formula for enterprise value is market cap plus total debt minus cash and cash equivalents. And this makes sense because market cap is the amount of money it takes to buy all the shares of the company. And you also need money to make up for the total debt the company has. However, if the company has cash and cash equivalents, you can subtract that because that will offset the price you pay to acquire the company. What's a stock option? A stock option is a financial product that gives the holder the right to buy or sell a stock at a certain price and during a certain time frame, or in some cases at a certain date. So there are two types of options. If you want to have an option of buying a stock at a certain price, then you get a call option. If you want to sell it at a certain price, you get a put option. What's a dividend? When a company makes money, that's called a profit, and it can distribute this profit to its owners or its shareholders, and this is called a dividend. What's a bull market? A bull market is used to describe a stock market where the stock prices in general are expected to rise. What's a bear market? A bear market describes a stock market where the stock prices in general are expected to fall. What are blue chip stocks? Blue chip stocks are stocks of companies that have excellent reputations and are well established and have operated for many years. They usually have large market caps and have dependable earnings. And some examples include Coca-Cola, Intel, Disney, McDonald's, and Johnson & Johnson. What are penny stocks? Penny stocks are stocks of small companies, and traditionally they're defined as trading for less than $1 per share, which is why they're called penny stocks. But now the official definition is that they're traded for less than $5 per share. And usually they're traded over the counter, and most Often, they're traded on the OTC bulletin board or the OTC markets group. What is over-the-counter trading? Let's say we have a big corporation. If it wants to raise money, it can go to investment banks, and they can take the stocks of the big corporation to a formal stock exchange and sell it on that stock exchange where there are formal rules and also listing requirements. And not every company can meet these listing requirements or even want to trade according to these rules. So if we have a small company that maybe cannot meet these requirements or doesn't want to trade according to the rules, they can go to broker dealers instead and they can take the stocks and sell them directly to investors. This is called over-the-counter trading. And the stocks being sold here are called unlisted stocks while stocks sold on Formal stock exchanges are called listed stocks, and there are networks of over-the-counter trading, such as the OTC Bulletin Board and the OTC Markets Group, which makes trading easier. What's a dividend yield? The formula for dividend yield is annual dividends per share over price per share, and it's used to give you an idea of how much dividends you'll get from a stock relative to the price you'll pay for that stock. What is a 10K? A 10-K is a comprehensive report that every publicly traded company has to file with the SEC, and it's about its financial performance and other business data. 
and it would look something like this. What is a 10Q? A 10Q is a business report that every publicly traded company has to file with the SEC every quarter. It's basically a quarterly report. And this is what it would look like. 